noumenal perception of the object or the noumenal existence of the object. And what um, Kant says is that such an existence um, should be the case, but we would never be able to understand it, right? We couldn't get our mind around it because, in a sense, the object won't allow us to do that, right? The object itself won't allow us to conceptualize it in its entirety. Okay. Well, what the logical positivists then say is, well, why are we discussing this noumenal perception anyway? Right? So first we talked about Hume, and we talked about Hume's account. Then we talked about Kant and Kant's response to Hume's account. And now we're moving further in the, in the historical timeline. We're talking about the logical positivist response, which is, why are we even talking about this noumenal perception? All we have is actual phenomenal perception. There is nothing more, right? Um, Despite all the myths, despite all the fantasy stories, all that really exists, according to the logical positivist, is this world, is this perception, is this mind and this ability. Anything else that would result in any transcendental, that means like other, uh, outside, beyond world experience, uh, any supernatural account uh, is foregone. So all that we have is direct perception uh, and the ability to determine whether or not that perception is accurate, whether or not those claims are accurate, whether or not the propositions are accurate, is what becomes the structure of positivism. But this is sort of the historical background so that we understand why the positivists had um, such an incredible role to play, not only in philosophy, but also in science. Um, so to continue with the, the narrative then, we recognize that as we said, it can be logical positivism or logical, logical in, uh, empiricism, right? Hence, epistemology, logical empiricism, or just positivism in general. What we then realize is there really is a great story to be told with respect to logical positivism. Usually, when people introduce logical positivism, they immediately bash it and say how ridiculous the claim it is, or it was pseudoscience, or or you know the claim, the main claim of logical positivism is itself not verifiable, and all this other foolishness. Not really understanding what it is that logical positivists contributed to uh, the advancement of, of of analysis, because that's key. But I'm not going to get there yet. So the first thing is that in in attempting to describe. the world, and attempting to describe the world, and we'll just put, you know, also known as reality, that should trigger something that I just said, um, we'll abbreviate it, logical positivists, uh, logical positivists realize the historical progression P-R-O-G-R-E-S-S, -S, progression of um, an attempt to describe, an attempt to, to describe reality, right? And this is, this is often overlooked, it's, and, it, and I think it's actually a pretty interesting uh, point, right? So in attempting to describe the world, reality, Logical, posi logical positivists realize the historical progression, right, as marked within time, within history, the historical progression of an attempt to describe reality. Well, what ended up happening is that first, reality was described by theology, T-H-E-O, right? Reality was first described by theology, right? So theology was the first to describe reality, right? Um, and it doesn't have to necessarily be Judeo-Christian conceptions of reality, right? Uh, you can go back as far as he see it. You can go back and, you know, the, the gods did it. Prometheus brought fire. Um, there was a, an allegory. There was a mythology that was constructed. You know, beasts came from the, the earth and uh, or to the earth to destroy mankind, help mankind. And very fantastical stories, right? Very fantastical stories. Um, the, the description of reality on a theological basis is supernatural, by definition. Right? The description of reality, of reality, 
uh, initially for theology is a supernatural description of the world, right? Um, I love mythology, I love fantasy, and there's lots and lots of stories of how the world uh, came into being, lots of interesting ways that the world came into being, um, lots of mythological uh, descriptions of how the world came into being, but all of these descriptions are supernatural descriptions, right? They transcend the capacity for us to verify the description. Or we know that though these things might be possible, for example, the 50-foot woman, we have yet to see the 50-foot woman walking around our cities or towns, right? So that theology is the first, is the original, is the seminal attempt to describe reality. Um, but the positive to say the problem, the baggage that a theological description of reality brings is that it is a supernatural description. There's a lot of political implications for that supernatural description, uh, a lot which are addressed by positivists, but nothing that I'm going to go into now because it becomes you know, uh, it becomes more complicated. It's not an introduction to logical positives. So, um, then we, we, there's a changing of the baton. So imagine that this is a, a foot race and you're running and you have the baton. I used to run track uh, when I was younger. And you have the baton and someone goes to hand you the baton. The baton is then passed, whether forcibly or not is up for discussion, from theology to the next people who are responsible for discussing reality. And I said who those people are earlier, metaphysics. Right? So it's passed from theology to metaphysicians. Right? Metaphysicians don't like the supernatural account. So not only are we having a, a, a progression of um, sort of the, the, the domain of explanation, theology being a domain of explanation of reality, metaphysics being the domain of explanation of reality, we're also having a transition of sort of the justification. The justification for theology is supernatural, but you can see how hard it would be to, dis to, to, to justify a supernatural explanation, especially as, since it's historically rooted, we're moving into more and more advanced technologically, we're moving into more and more advancement um, um, scientifically, mathematically, logically, intellectually, um, supernatural explanations don't carry the same weight that they might have in earlier uh, generations, in earlier centuries. So metaphysics is number two in line, according to the logical positivists, right? It moved from theology to metaphysics, and it moved from, um, from a supernatural account to an account that was rooted in metaphysics, an account to understand the concepts and the constructs of reality, right? But it wasn't just um, the attempt to understand the concepts and constructs. It was formulated in this idea of necessity and sufficiency, right? What's necessary in order for this thing to exist? What's a sufficient case in order for this to exist? So for example, um, something being necessary, it, it, it could be, um, as an antecedent, and actually this might this discussion might be a little too advanced. I can't get into necessity and um, sufficiency not, right now. I'll probably have to do another lecture on um, necessity. Hold on a second. I mean, a lecture, video lecture. Because I'm in a video lecture. I know you're coming. <laughs> Bye. Um, <laughs>